Welcome to EMTB videos. This is the new for 2019 Panasonic GX0. At least that's what I thought it was called. It says so in all the flyer e-bike tech sheets I've seen. But when looking for more details on the motor, it seems it's sometimes called the GX Ultimate 2. Last summer I had my first encounter with a Panasonic mid-drive motor. It was the Panasonic X0. At 3.7 kilos it wasn't the lightest, but it was lighter than the old Bosch Performance CX. It was rated at 80 Nm, and the motor design allowed for pretty short chainstays. So it was a fairly modern motor design. Up until now. During 2019 and 2020 pretty much all the big players have got the motor weight down to just under 3 kilos. And so has Panasonic. The new GX0 has a claimed weight of 2.95 kilos. And the motor is supposedly a bit more compact than the old X0. Torque is up from 80 to 90 Nm. Looking at the specs, the Panasonic GX0 looks equal to or better than the top of the line EMTB motors from Shimano, Bosch and Specialized slash Bros. But is it? Is it as good or better? The first thing we noticed was how powerful the motor felt. Riding in high, which is the highest of four modes, the bike picked up speed really quickly. In my latest motor reviews I've talked a lot about high power at low cadence. Power when riding in a high gear. And as far as we can tell, the Panasonic beats them all. The GX0 ramps up pretty slowly, and it doesn't shove you up to speed immediately when it kicks in. If you pedal slow and lightly, the motor carefully delivers its power. But if you pedal faster, the motor power ramps up, and it keeps ramping up until you're pedaling too fast to get any real power into the pedals. In my new uphill test, I could ride in the highest gear without losing speed. This motor is just so pleasant on the transport sections, and it's pushing a little over 25 km per hour before it ramps down motor power. So we could easily pedal at about 26 km per hour before the power ramped down too much. Fredrik was in on a lot of the testing, and we agreed the high mode wasn't our favorite on the trails. <laughs> the motor is fairly quick to activate in high, much quicker than the old Panasonic X0. And the GX0 is quicker to deactivate too. This behavior is good for controlling the motor on the technical trails. But still, when the new motor was properly powering up, we were struggling a bit to control the speed. Dropping down one step puts the bike in auto mode. This mode offers much less power when pedaling lightly. It appears to be on par with the eco mode. When we pedal harder, the motor will increase power amplification seamlessly. The motor seems a bit quicker to engage and disengage in auto compared to high. The GX0 drops down quite far when we pedal lightly. It feels less powerful than the Giant Sync Drive Pro when pedaling carefully in the dynamic mode. This is great for control. The Panasonic activates very smoothly with no surprises. When pedaling hard, the GX0 will give you maximum amplification. In some cases, that's a bit much. The Giant Sync Drive Pro has kept the maximum power amplification in the dynamic mode, making it a bit easier to use in the rough. Still, the Panasonic Auto Mode is very good. Fredrik preferred riding the GX0 in the Auto Mode. Next up was Standard, the second to lowest mode. We expected a loss of power in Standard Mode. But in several situations, the standard mode is more powerful than auto. It takes some significant pedaling force to make the auto mode more powerful than standard. I was effortlessly hitting 20 km per hour on flat-ish terrain, 
and I was doing pretty steep climbs without wishing for more motor support. The behavior was a lot like the behavior in high, but the lower power improved control significantly. It is just as quick to engage and disengage, but due to the lower power amplification, riding technical sections is much easier. There's also a bit of power in eco mode. It's not much help on the trails, but if you only want a little help from the motor, you may find eco mode a tad too much. The 2020 Bosch Performance CX will deliver less power in eco, and the Shimano E8000 can be tweaked to deliver less power in eco too. And speaking of the competition, the Panasonic with its four different modes offers the flexibility I'm missing in the Shimano motor. The Panasonic GX0 has one mode for maximum power on mellow trails and for transport sections. Then there are two modes for demanding trails, the dynamic auto mode and the static standard mode. And at the bottom there's eco for minimal motor help. The Shimano motor does not offer a static mode for trail riding. If you want that mode, you will have to reduce power of the most powerful mode, but then you're lacking a mode to access maximum motor power. It's an unnecessary compromise. I remember the old Panasonic motor being a bit noisy, but the new one isn't bad. At cruising speeds, it can be almost completely silent. But there is some noise when accelerating in a high gear. And it's not as quiet as the latest Specialized Slash Brose motor. But we believe it's more quiet than the Shimano, Bosch and Yamaha EMTB motors. Walk Assist is very good on the GX0. Just click down on the mode selection button until you get to the bottom. Then press and hold the same button again. Regardless of which gear it was in, the speed seemed to be about 5 km per hour. And it didn't drop power if the wheel started spinning. Panasonic has made a great motor. It's just as good as its competitors. The GX0 is the most powerful of the bunch, at least at low cadence. And it's one of the more silent motors. Allegedly, Univega is using the Panasonic motor, and the Flyer brand is definitely using it. And that's more or less it. I'm not sure why other brands don't consider it. It is good enough for sure. 